Hello and welcome to a new series of video lectures, this time about system software. If you have a look in at the diagram right in the center of the screen, you can already get a basic idea about what system software is and how it works. You can see it sits in between the application software, the software that we use when we use a computer, and the actual hardware itself. And this is a good conceptual overview to what system software which includes things like the operating system, utilities, drivers, how they all work. So what are we going to learn? Well, we're going to learn about the purpose and functions of system software. We're going to spend a lot of time looking at operating systems and their key functions. And we're also going to look at utility system software, what that is and how these programs work. Question, what is software? Well, to understand software, we have to understand hardware. And hardware, as the name suggests, is the physical components. It's the stuff that we can touch. The CPU, the memory, the keyboards, the mouse, etc. Whereas software consists of program code and data files. Software allows hardware to do something useful, like add up some numbers in a spreadsheet, print a document, save a file, or display a web page. There are two main types of software, what we call system software and application software. System software is then usually divided into three other categories. We've got the operating system, utility software, and what we often call hardware drivers. Sometimes we just refer to everything in system software as the operating system, but for this level we need to be able to separate that into the operating system, the utility software, and the hardware drivers, which are all linked, but can be considered different types of software. So application software. This is designed to enable users to perform specific tasks and includes applications for creating and managing information, data, media content, and communicating with others. Basically, application software is the software that we use when we use a computer. When you turn on your computer or your tablet or your smartphone, you want to use apps, you want to use programs. These are the things that we really use computers for. And there's lots of different types of application software that you should be familiar with. Word processors, spreadsheets, database software, desktop publishing, presentation, web authoring, multimedia, graphics editing, video editing, communication software, even games like Grand Theft Auto or Call of Duty. These are all apps. These are all software programs. System software isn't so exciting. It's not what we want to use when we use a computer. System software is the software that we need before we can run the applications. System software is software designed to operate and control the computer hardware. Again, there's three main types of system software. The operating system. Operating systems control and monitor the running of application software and hardware. An operating system, for example, Windows or Android, is responsible for things like saving, loading, deleting, copying, renaming, running programs, maintaining a user interface, security, all sorts of background tasks that we need before we can run the applications on top of that. We've also got utility software. Utility software is kind of single purpose maintenance software that is designed to analyze, configure, optimize, and maintain your computer system. Think about things like a disk defragmenter, registry cleaner, compression software, antivirus software. Again, software that we need to perform specific tasks just to keep our, soft, our computer system healthy and working. We also have drivers. This is software designed by manufacturers to interface between hardware devices and the operating system. So when you put a new graphics card into your desktop, you'll need to install a new driver to allow your graphics card and the operating system to communicate with each other. It's the same when you have a new mouse, a new keyboard. There's got to be software there that allows the hardware and the software to kind of work together. And we call those drivers. What is an operating system? 
Well, an operating system, often shortened to OS, is a computer program which controls everything the computer does. New computers usually come with one installed, and that's because you cannot use any other program without an operating system. And that's because an application software, for example, Microsoft Word, doesn't know how to talk to the hardware. When you press print in Microsoft Word, it doesn't know how to talk to the printer. It doesn't know how to communicate with the mouse or the keyboard or even how to output directly to your monitor. It needs the operating system which can handle that interfacing. If you think back to that first diagram that we saw, the operating system is in the middle there between the application software and the hardware, and that allows them all to communicate and work together. Sometimes operating systems will be referred to as platforms. You might hear somebody refer to the Windows platform or the iOS platform. And a platform is just an environment where applications, programs, software can run. So again, just a little note there, if I talk about applications, apps, or programs, or software, these all mean the same thing. So you need to know about some key operating systems. Here we have a list of some of the most important ones, and hopefully you've heard of most of these. Android is the Google operating system that they use on mobile devices like tablets and smartphones. This was based on Linux, which is a very important operating system, and just changed and edited in such a way that it works really good on this sort of mobile device. We've got the Mac operating system, Mac OS, and this is really used on their desktops and laptop systems. We've got Unix. Unix is a very important operating system. It's the oldest on this list. I think this work started on 1969 on Unix, and it's used as the basis now of a lot of other operating systems. If you've used any Apple products, like uh, um, their iPhone or their laptops or desktop systems, all of Apple's operating systems are based on Unix. Unix is also very important for running kind of internet backbone services. It's a very powerful operating system. We also have Linux. Linux is a competitor to Unix. Um, Unix, as I say, has been around for a long time. At one point, the makers of Unix start trying to charge a lot of money for it. A group of programmers got together and thought we need the same software, but make it freely available to anyone who wants it. And this is what ended up becoming Linux. And again, you've all probably used Linux. It's used for a lot, again, of key internet backbone services, but it's also where Android comes from. Again, Mac OS X is what they use on their desktop and laptop systems. Again, that's based on Unix. And we've also got Windows. Not going to go into much detail. We all know that most personal computer laptops and desktops run Microsoft Windows, where that's version 7, 8, 8.1, or the current version, which is version 10. So what do operating systems do? Well, they look after and oversee such things as managing the computer hardware and the peripherals, managing programs installed and being run, managing data storage between memory locations, the CPU and secondary storage, providing an interface between the hardware and the applications, and the user in fact, managing an interface between the computer and the user, such as managing the video display on screen, managing security and organizing data so that it's not overwritten. So again, these are all key background tasks that aren't cool or very exciting in certain ways, but without them, nothing in a modern computer system would work. Even mobile devices like smartphones and tablets need quite a complicated operating system in order to run. Operating systems also provide a file system for the storage and retrieval of files. So if you're using Microsoft Windows, you've got the Explorer window that allows you to view all the files and folders, copy and move things around. So in this series of lessons, I'll probably do two or three more lectures on this. We're going to look at the following key functions. The kernel providing user interface multitasking, memory management, user management, file management, 
and peripheral management and device drivers. Again, that's quite a lot of material here, so it'll probably take two or three videos to get through it all in a reasonable sized chunk. And then we'll look at different utility programs that you need to know for your exam at this level. So hopefully you'll join me for a few more videos in the future. Hope that was informative. Good luck and keep going with your studies.